What's going on, YouTube? This is Luke with Endless Entrepreneurs uh, coming to you with a little bit of a late night video for me. Uh, it's 10 p.m. East Coast time here. Uh, I'm just preparing for my bulk purchase that's coming and thought I'd do a, a brand review video. I've had a couple of requests to start doing more brand review videos. thought this was kind of a perfect excuse to do that. Uh, for those of you new to my channel, I am a uh, part-time eBay seller, primarily sell clothing, and a full-time corporate finance analyst. I uh, build my business in my spare time, I and mean, I've been tracking my journey on this channel for well, about half a year now. Uh, I've got a big 100K challenge for this year, and I uh, just made a bulk buy that will hopefully propel me towards that challenge. And um, it happens to be all new without tag uh, LL Bean pants, so perfect for the topic of the show. I'll wait for people to fill in here. Let's say we got 20 watching already, so thank you guys for stopping in. Hi, Christian. Yeah, you're first in. Thank you for joining. Uh, and if I'm looking over here, I've got the chat up to my right, so sorry about that. Hi, Fabian. Uh, hi, Jerry. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Hobo. Uh, Jen, hi. Hi, Canvas. I think that's how you pronounce it. Looks like we're up to 44 watching live. Awesome. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. 57. Wow. All right. Hopefully, this will be a fun topic. 68. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm just gonna keep letting people filter in for another minute or so, and uh, we'll get rolling. Rockstar sent him over. Oh, Casey sent him over. Thank you, Casey. Really appreciate that. <clears throat> Hopefully, I'm not streaming the same time he is. I actually didn't even check to see if anyone was streaming right now. It's so late past my bedtime. I don't even know what the uh, schedule is this late normally. Uh, appreciate you guys. Oh, you all just got done with Casey. Sweet. Very cool. All right. Well, I'm gonna jump in, guys. We got a hundred watching live. This is awesome. And uh, yes, I am Luke for our set in the chat. Uh, so I'm gonna jump right in. I just and give, kind of give a little background to why I'm doing this. If you if you haven't followed my channel at all, I just bought 3,000 pair of new without tags uh, LL Bean pants. I thought they were gonna be here today or tomorrow. There was a little miscommunication on the shipping. Working through that, uh, they are here in Charlotte, I guess. I need to call tomorrow and schedule the delivery. So actually, I'm hoping I can negotiate it for Saturday morning, and that way I'll have the whole weekend to just go crazy with it. Um, no idea they're sight unseen. I've had pictures of them, so I roughly know what I'm getting. And it's about a 65% breakdown women's pants and about 35 men's. The men's are primarily jeans, which is one of the big selling points for me, and a lot of them are the flannel line jeans. Um, which is pretty cool and they are they all like some of them have stickers some of them have tags some of them don't have anything but they all are like they're all new so they're new without tags i'll be able to sell on ebay for that um i'm gonna get a little shot here of anthony and german in the chat and he says i have 16 started selling ebay a month ago and they sold 14 items so far and made 145 dollars profit now that's hustle a big shout out there that's awesome love to see people your age out there doing stuff like that uh, making things happen for yourself so Thank you, everyone, for watching. We're up to 164 live. This is crazy. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Rockstar said the hashtag. I'm sorry. I'll make sure I hashtag you in the future to uh, just leech off your audience. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to – what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you guys through how I research. And with the palette coming, I really want to make sure I have a firm grasp on all the different niches within the pants. So this is going to focus around – Pants. I'm sorry if you want to learn about the other aspects of LL Bean. It's probably going to primarily be pants. Just a disclaimer. Um, I am going to share my screen with you guys. Let me see here. 180. All right. I'm going to flip over to. All right. So how I research, guys, and if you've watched other uh, eBayers, they probably have gone over similar stuff. Um, I type in. And I'm going to start with the men's jeans, and we're going to kind of go through each genre and talk about um, what I'm looking for and what I'm going to get my palette and how I identify what my selling price is going to be. Uh, so the first thing I do is just type in what I'm looking for. So I just, I'm going to start with the jeans and I'll kind of show you guys those. And then I pick the um, condition it's in. So for me, we're going to search new without tags since that's what I'm getting. Uh, and then we're going to come down here and this is the really important ones guys. So there's two ways you can do this. You can click sold listings, which is going to show you everything that's sold or you can click completed and sold and it'll show you items that have ended but not sold as well as items that have sold. Now the advantage to clicking completed listings would be that you can see how many are out there ending continually without sales so you can get a kind of an idea of the sell through and how fast they're moving. <clears throat> For my purposes, I'm a long tail seller and because I just made a bulk purchase, I don't care as much about the sell through in this particular case. There are situations where I may want to, but for right now, it doesn't matter that much to me. I just want to see what the average selling price is for each type of item. So I'm just going to click sold listings. 
All right, now the next filter I use, and this is pretty much the last filter I use, unless I'm trying to get a specific price range, is up here, the sort button. You can actually pick what order it displays the search results in. Uh, now for me, I like to use price plus shipping highest first, um, because a lot, so some buyers offer free shipping, some buyers offer paid shipping, and to eBay and to me, the all in price is what matters the most, which is this, which is price, oops, sorry, it's price plus shipping highest first. So I always sort all of it based on that. Uh, I also like to see here, the reason why I do this is I like to see if I start to scroll down and the prices drops off all of a sudden, then I know that those are kind of anomalies at the top and that the price is more normalizing as I scroll down. So let's just start here. Now I know for sure that I at least have 200 pair of these of, of jeans coming that are men's. Um, so this is what I'm gonna start to focus on. These are probably gonna be some of the higher ticket items that I have. Um, and so you see these, I don't know if these have tags on, but I haven't filtered for new without tags. <clears throat> my, I don't know the color that mine are gonna be. I know most of them are gonna be flannel lined. Um, and just so you know guys, actually, I didn't really describe. So I bought 3,000 pair and I paid a dollar 15 per pair. So $1.15 per pair. Um, so I'm anticipating at least 10% of what I bought is gonna be garbage, like you know, broken zippers that were overlooked, buttons, stains, tears. I mean, that's just a part of the bulk buying game, I think. I don't, I'm not an expert, it's my first one, but that's what I've heard. So I'm anticipating I'm only gonna have probably, I'm gonna guess I'm gonna have about 26 to 2700 pair of usable jeans. So that kind of makes my cost of jeans go up a little bit, but I mean, or pants, but still not too bad. So I'm gonna start with the jeans because I know these will be one of the most profitable ones. So as you can see here, I'm gonna scroll down because those first two are kind of not relevant. So have men's L being flannel line black jeans, new size 32. Um, so right here I see these ones were at auction. Um, and so there were six bids that kind of got bid up. So I don't think this price is, I mean, $40 all in with shipping here, like what, $47? dollars for that top one. Um, it looks like we, as we scroll down, we're getting the 37 here. Uh, this is about 35, 34-ish, 33. And you can see guys, the price is starting to drop off pretty steep. So I'm only through like seven or eight pairs and I'm already under $30 shipped. So for me, what I would consider as I research here, these top couple records here are an anomaly. I wouldn't consider them a part of the normal bell curve when I'm pricing this specific item. So it looks to me like 30 is probably your top, right? 29.95 here, 29.50. So I'm gonna keep scrolling. Yeah, we're still at 26.50, 27. And so it's starting to drop pretty steady here, guys. So what I would say for the way I model, I'm getting through the first page here and we're still, we're still over $20 shipped. So for what I'm seeing here, and these are, I mean, these photographs, some of them are good, some of them are bad. I mean, it's kind of up to you guys how you want to view them. Um, but because I, these aren't, the presentation of these isn't fantastic. So I'm gonna say for jeans, what I'm gonna probably gonna shoot for when I price them is I'm gonna do a multi-quantity listing. Hopefully, hopefully they're mostly the same style so I don't do too many listings and I can do one set of pictures with multiple sizes and colors. And I'm probably gonna price right around here. I think from scrolling through from this subset of what we've looked at, I'm gonna shoot for like that 25 to $27 range. Um, and that's probably, especially for commodity, I'm gonna kind of flood the market here too. That's the other thing to think about is I'm gonna flood the market. Um, and I think that 26, $25 range is gonna be perfect. Also guys, I've been looking at the chat here and I see there's lots of questions coming. I will get to your questions and I promise I'll leave time for Q and A. Just save them for the end if you don't mind. I'm gonna go through the research part of it and then we'll save the last 10 minutes or so to do those. And uh, Casey, feel free to jump in and answer whatever you see there, you, you, you know, quite a bit. And uh, I appreciate that. And Shannon, uh, are you in the chat? I can be. So I'm put Shannon in the chat as a moderator just to make sure everyone's playing nicely. No, I'm not moderating. <laughs> you didn't make me one. All right. Well, once you're in the chat, I can make you. All right. So this is jeans, guys. So now we know what we're going to price them. But this is how I would basically go through research and identify how I was going to price something. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful just at a concept level. So that's just a small subset of my order. So now I'm going to go over to LL Bean dress pants. And I'm going to stick with men's. Um, and I'm gonna go to, so they don't even have, so this is interesting, so they don't have a new without tags option. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with new. I still have my same filters on. I'm gonna check what the new ones are going for. And then I'm gonna check with the use and see kind of what the gap is because I'll probably take the use plus like 10 or 15%. So these are all going for, eh, we're looking like low 20s. 
So I'm thinking you have a type in the chat for me. Casey. Sorry, Shannon yelling to me from below. Casey yelled at you. Oh, Casey yelled at me. Yeah, that's fine. All right, sorry guys. I'm just making Shannon monitor real quick. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get back to here. So looking at this, and you see it just drops off right here. So more items related. So men's dress pants. There isn't very many records. Um, so I'm going to say the market's not too saturated by these. And this is the spot, guys, where I'm going to click probably I'm going to take off sold listings. And I'm going to look at just how many I think are out there. So when I type, now this is really interesting, guys. Now look, for new L.L. Bean dress pants, there's only 20 results right here. That's it. So that comes to show you guys the market's not very saturated with men's dress pants, so to speak. Now I'm going to say use. Let's see how bad the use market is. So there's only 134 men's dress pants. Now think about this. There's 134 active. There's 20 new pair active. And I'm probably about to get three to 400 pair new without tags. So to me, what that says is I can pretty much set the price of the market how I want to. Um, this tells me what the market's looking like. So irregardless of demand. So let's let's throw demand out of, the, out of the equation for a second simply because there just aren't that many options. So if a buyer comes and I have that style and size they're looking for, they're stuck basically if that's what they want. And a lot of times the L.O. Bean is a niche brand. Someone's looking specifically for it. I'm going to be able to command the price here. So even though we saw, and let's just let's keep it on used for a second, the used comps are... And these are vintage, but the used comps are probably 20. These are doing tags. I'm looking, and these are have cashmere in them, so that's not really what I have. Let's just see. This is probably the closest. So these used ones are like 22, 23, and that starts to drop off a bit. So I'm going to say new without tags here. I'm probably going to go, and there's only 68 results here, guys. Look at the 68 results of sold dress pants. So I'm probably going to price. $25, just like the jeans. I might even go that high with dress pants. I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought I'd be able to price the jeans higher. Uh, let's actually backtrack and look at the jeans and see how many listings were up because look how many more jeans are here. 689 results for sold jeans. That just shows you how much more popular the jeans are than dress pants, but it also shows you that I'm going to kind of dominate the market as far as it goes for dress pants. So it's kind of actually an opportunity for me, and I think I'll price even more aggressively because I'll control that. All right, so there's two aspects of this. All right, let me see here. Oopsie, wrong tab. All right, so let's go to, now women's is 65% of the lot. So this is the other kind of issue with this, is uh, this is probably where I'm gonna get middle of, the, middle of the line pricing. So, and I haven't done research on the women's pants. I just, I mean, I did basic stuff when I made the buy, but nothing too crazy. Women's dress pants. I also have women's jeans too, so we will research those. But now look at this: twenty total results for sold listings, seven new, and thirteen use. So that means one of two things: it means the demand is really terrible, right? If that many have sold. But now let's look at how many haven't sold and just how many are active. There's only eight new dress pants right now. So again, I have the opportunity to set the market. This could be really good. This could be really bad. Not really sure, right? Um, but for me, I look at this as opportunity. I look at it as a niche that's not being met, and I look at it as an opportunity to set the market. They could be slow movers, but I did just buy a new storage unit. Well, I've got a new storage unit, 10 by 20. It's going to cost me 10 cents a month to keep these up, guys. And actually, I'm not sure multi quantity might even cut me a better break. I haven't looked at it yet. But in either and if someone knows in the chat and can let me know how much the multi quantity um, is versus that one, that would be great. Um, so I was reading through the comments. There, I got distracted. How many women's um, so the women and Shannon has asked how much the women's. I'm getting about 65 percent, 60 percent is, is is women's. Um, so the other thing here is talking about the long term storage of this. I expect this lot of 3,000 pair to take probably eight months to sell, maybe even longer, maybe eight to 12 total. But I'm only into them for dollar 15, right? And an average sell price of even like 22 dollars is like you know, 50 grand basically over that time. Now I'm not saying I'm gonna get that and might end up way lower by the time, but even if it's 16 bucks or 15 bucks, I'm still making out pretty darn good on a three, you know, about $3,400 investment. Um, so, and the listing fees are just so low that being a long tail seller and setting the market makes a lot more sense. 
All right, so those are dress pants. Now let's look at the jeans here. All right. And let's go to sold. We're going to do new without. Oh, so there are new without tags on the jeans line, so that's good. Let's do sold. All right. And so it looks like these actually similar to dress pants. So it looks like the – so you see, guys, so up here it's a little deceiving. you got to be careful of this. My first couple of searches is like, oh, you know, 37, 37.95 plus 7.85 shipping. Like, oh, wow, it's huge, 35. And I think when you're in a thrift store, guys, this is kind of a tip to be really careful of is that if you just look at the first 10 listings, you might make a bad buy, where if you scroll down here a little bit, look, at it drops off a bit. You know, if I'm in a store, I'm not buying these used if they're only selling new without tags for $20 ship, basically, or $21 ship. I'm probably not making that purchase. But if you didn't scroll down, take the time to scroll down, you wouldn't have noticed that in the store. So for me, new without tags, I'm okay with this. I still think I can get 20 bucks, $18 shipped. I'm in them for $1.15. I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, that's a really, I mean, that's a really good margin because normally I'm getting things for four dollars, selling them for like 25, 26. So if I'm get, if I'm getting them for three dollars less, selling them for 21, 20, it's still the same margin. Um, and now I didn't have to take the time to source. The time to list is quicker because I do a multi quantity. So there's just all those reasons why it's okay to do a little lower of a sell price here. Um, so I'm just gonna keep scrolling for a minute. I want to see if it drops off. So yeah, right here. I mean, I'm halfway down. It's dropping off to pretty much. There's only how many listings? So right here, 38 sold listings. That's it. So now let's look again. Let's take a peek at how many are haven't sold or how many are listed. So there's only 70 right now, new without tags. Now let's look at how many are used that are up to see if that used market is really hammered. And guys, this is what I do when I'm trying to learn about brands. I mean, I, I really think that people should do this. And you should do this at least once a week. Pick a brand you don't know about and, and teach yourself. All right, so use this is interesting. The used LL Bean market is tw there's 2,200 pair here listed. Now let's see what are sold in the used. I'm wondering if there's a lot of vintage stuff. So vintage LL Bean actually sells well. And if you do some research um, in the sweaters and some other things, especially wool stuff does well. The vintage things. So it looks like sold. There's 690 used jeans sold. So I actually have to probably be careful here. If the used market is that saturated then I can't price too much higher with my new without tags ones. So this will be something I'll have to be sensitive to, guys, is that the other ones, the used market wasn't that big. But for some reason, the women's jeans used market is pretty well saturated. Um, and not in a bad way. It's just there's a lot of them. So this this might actually dictate what I price at. You will see a lot of these are the flannel lines. Um, yeah, so looking at these, oh, that's interesting. I haven't seen that before. That's the way they tell their inventory number. They put it in the pocket. That's pretty cool, actually. So yeah, guys, I'm thinking with the jeans here. I'm women's jeans specifically. I'm probably doing 20-ish, 20 to 22 new without tags. Um, and I'm gonna do. I'm undecided on shipping on these, and I'm curious to see what other people think if I should charge shipping or not. I think I'm gonna do free shipping. Just keep it consistent with the rest of my store. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay. So that's enough of me rambling. Hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about researching. Hopefully you've seen what how I'm researching the bulk buy I made. I am going to stop sharing and we're gonna go into some Q&A here. All right. Let me look over the questions here. So if you have questions, definitely put them in over here. I will answer anything that I can. Um, and I'll answer it as honestly as I know how to. I know I expect some a bit of uh, around the world questions here with all the different topics, especially around bulk buying. Uh, someone's recommending charge shipping all the way. Yeah, and that's an interesting topic. I mean, I go back and forth with that. Knowing that I can ship these, every single one of these, I can ship flat rate for $6 makes it interesting um, because I can price that into my shipping. I mean, I was looking at those, right? It's not changing the final price. Uh, Karen said, uh, jeans are too heavy for free shipping. Right, but at the end of the day, how I look at it is it's an all-in price, right? If I'm charging shipping, I'm only charging $14 to the item to get to my $20. Or I'm charging $20 free shipping. It ends up being the same. eBay is going to charge me fees on the 20 versus the 20 no matter what, whether it's shipping and purchase price or just all purchase price. Um, how do you, so someone's asking, how do you list the size on vintage clothes? So first of all, I always mark that as a vintage. 
so that they know right away. Because vintage clothing typically runs smaller, right, than the way we make clothes nowadays. So that's the first thing. Um, second, I always list the tag size and the measurements. And then if the measurements are dictating that, like, yeah, it was a large in the 90s, but if that's a medium now, I might say large, but fits like a medium, right? See measurements. Sometimes I'll do things like that. Um, Joe Chase, this is a great question. He asked if I'll be doing best offer as well. Um, he's saying that he finds doing best offer with free shipping doesn't work as well, which is actually, that's my whole model is I do best offer with free shipping, but it's because I'm a long tail seller and I price my stuff way up high. Like my stuff's upper 75% pretty much in the market for most items. But this is a different situation. I might not do best offer on these, honestly, <clears throat> because I'm, I'm going to control the market for the most part. That sounds like really egotistical, so I apologize. That's not how I want to come off. But like, I'm really going to control the market as far as this product and brand goes. I think I'm just going to do straight no best offer, but I think I am going to do free shipping, especially because of multi-quantity listing. I feel like I think about like when I go to Amazon or I go to a website, like a clothing website, um, I like seeing that free shipping. It just, it just it works, it jives well for me as a buyer. So I think I might keep that, but I might not do best offer. Um, Anthony Nerman said, how much do you charge for international shipping? So that's a good question as well. I use the global shipping program. Um, I don't ship on my own internationally, so they actually set the price for me. Um, so you'll see that it, basically they will tell the buyer what it's going to be. You just are entering the specifics when you list the item, and then they tell them how much it's going to be to ship. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Just use global shipping for everything. It just makes it simpler. I mean, that's what I recommend. Unless you're going to get a ton of international sales on a certain niche product, maybe don't, but that's what I do. Um, Yvette said, did you research to find your bulk buy or have an inside tip? Um, so honestly, I just got a referral from a friend who was thinking about buying it and logistically it didn't work because of it was actually um, – Chris, 10K in the Bay, had found it, and uh, it logistically it wasn't going to work, and so he let me have second dibs on it, and uh, I'm not going to share that relationship as far as where, where I'm buying it from, just because if it's future, you know, good networking for me, that's the one thing I won't share with you guys. I hope you don't take offense, but this is kind of like one thing I'm holding se separate. I'll share everything else, Goodwills, everywhere else I shop, but for this, I'm not going to share that. Um, let's see. Too many low ballers on best offer. Rob said, so I agree, I get a lot of low ball offers, but I'll say this, you also have to think about it, make sure item rank higher in the search engine the more offers you get, right? So when items get offers, they look like they're active items. So to the Google search engine, to my knowledge, it's gonna make it more visible. So keep that in mind, there's puts and takes. If someone gives you a low ball offer, I just send them back the offer price, or a dollar below it, or 50 cents below it. I mean, it takes me five seconds, I'm, and I work full time, so I'm sitting at work, Whatever, I on a break, I see a couple offers, I fire back an offer, it doesn't take time. If I was full time, I might think differently about it because I think the volume of listings I have would be so high that I don't want to deal with best offers. Um, you also can set auto decline on your best offers, guys. I don't know if you know that. You can actually set, like, if it's below X percentage, automatically decline. So you never even have to manage it. Um, let's see. Jennifer says, you will have to eat costs of shipping when you have a return. So, I guess I don't understand that, and that's maybe for a different episode. And I've heard people say that you're going to eat costs, <clears throat> but regardless, if I only can charge fourteen dollars because I'm charging six dollars shipping versus charging twenty, I'm still getting the same amount of dollars, and I'm still spending the same amount of dollars to ship it. And then the buyer has to spend the money to send it back, unless they game the system. Either way, it's the same amount of dollars coming into my account and going out of my account. So I. I guess I just kind of disagree with that philosophy. I understand the thought process behind it, but if you just say simple put and takes, I just I have a hard time wrapping my mind around that. Um, but from that's just kind of my standpoint on it. Um, let's see what else we have here. So I'm just looking for questions, guys. And also, here's the other point, guys. And, and I didn't know this for a while. The only reason I'm sharing it because I just learned it recently. I wasn't sure if people were charging shipping because they weren't getting charged final value fees on the shipping costs, but I confirmed and you get charged a final value fee on the total price, shipping plus the ending price. So you're not like gaming the system or dodging the fees by charging shipping. Um, but there are arguments that just charging that lower price and adding shipping looks better to buyers. I mean, I don't know the answer to that. That's just something for everyone to test and decide. Uh, my reporter said, 
Do you plan on selling the items individually or will you sell in lots? So I'm gonna sell in multi-quantity listings, but so basically I'm still selling them individually. I'm not gonna lock them together, but I'm gonna do multi-quantity. And my hope is that I'll have, you know, batches of hopefully 50 to 100 of the same style and I can just offer it in different colors and sizes. So I'm really just taking pictures of each color and not having to do pictures of every single one. And then like I'll do a bin of style, you know, A, B, and it'll have all mediums and then bin of style AB with all larges and, and a certain color or and I can sort them that way and kind of keep track. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm sure I'll change a bunch as I get into it. I think I just have to dive into the, the palettes and figure out what the best way to do it is. Um, and they said, how long did it take you to be able to make eBay a full-time job? So that's a good question, but eBay isn't my full-time job. So that is that's a, I'm glad you asked it, but I actually I work full time as a corporate finance analyst, and I do this in my part my spare time. So this is more of my hobby business. Um, I don't know eventually if it will grow to be full time. I think that has the possibility to. Uh, doesn't mean that I don't want to get there eventually. But right now, I enjoy going to my job, and I enjoy doing this, and I kind of have the best of both worlds. And I'm building capital and reinvesting in business because I'm working full time, and so I'm able to make bulk buys and do things like this because I keep it all separate. So for right now, I'm not full time, but um, you know, perhaps in the future it'll grow to a point where I want to be. Thank you, Casey. Appreciate the compliment. Uh, Samantha said, I do free shipping just because as a buyer, it's like a me mental trick. The word free just gets people. Yeah, that's how I view it too. I try to put myself in the consumer's shoes. I think seeing the fast and free logo by itself is a huge bump in the listing. Uh, but that's just kind of, I don't know, that's how I view it. Um, let's see. Ms. Diana said, how do you handle defect return when you stated the defect in title listing description? Do you just accept or try to fight? So <clears throat> I have a pretty firm philosophy on returns. If it's going to take me longer than a minute to fight it, I don't fight it. And usually it's just not worth my time. Like if the item sold once, it's going to sell again. If I sold it with a defect, I probably sold it at a discount. The amount of time to get it back and relist it just isn't worth my time. So I'm just like, here, take your refund. Try, hopefully you give me positive feedback. It's a part of doing business. I mean, I have a 3% return rate or less each month. So for me, or I compare, and I always tell this to everyone, think about it from a retail clothing perspective. In peak seasons, they get in 60 to 70% return rate sometimes on clothing. We get 3% as eBayers for the most part if you do a decent job of your listings. So it's just a part of doing business, and we really are lucky and fortunate that they can't even try on the stuff, right? They're not even trying on when we're selling them. Versus even brick and mortar retail where you try it out and have that high return rate. So if you think about it that way, it's a little bit easier to swallow. I know it sucks and people game the system all the time and make false claims, but that's really what I recommend people do. Um, Leah Basel said, you will get more of a, a top rated seller discount when you have free shipping. Top rated seller does not apply when buyers charge shipping. That's very interesting. I didn't know that. And this is going to sound very... Uh, uneducated of me, but I haven't spent a lot of time on the top rated seller stuff because I just, I don't know, I don't do enough volume and sometimes my shipments are a little late because I get stuff from my storage unit not on time. And I mean, I'm pretty good about it. I'd say I'm way better than average, but I haven't really researched it much because I just haven't held myself to that standard, unfortunately. Uh, so as I get bigger, especially with all these items that I'm about to have in, I'm gonna have to check on that so I can soak up every last penny of profit. Um, let me see. Question: How are your shoe sales going? How do you handle shipping costs? So that's a great question. The o this is the only type of item that I charge shipping for currently is shoes, and that's because it can vary so much with the weight and where it goes. Um, and I learned that from Tino, the sole advisor. You should check out his channel. Um, I actually end up doing calculated shipping, and I pretty much charge like that two to three pound rate for almost everything. That way, I don't eat it on shipping. Um, Samantha said, do you still have no fit, no return on your description? I'm not sure what's on my description anymore because I've been using this stupid template for so long. I say stupid, I don't mean to fence Steve Rakin, it is your template. But it has like restocking fees on it. I have to go through a mass change, all of them. I don't fight returns. I don't have any policies against them. I do 30-day returns on most of my stuff. No questions asked. Like it's just part of doing business. Um, let's see. We've got 160 people watching, guys. Thank you so much for stopping in. I'm going to take a couple more questions, and then I do have to get some sleep. I have one more day of work before this bulk buy comes in, hopefully. Uh, let me see. Let's see. Entrepreneur said 95% of my listings are free shipping, and I'm top rated. I don't think it's going to do shipping. Okay, so maybe – and I have to do research. I don't want to uh, 
try to make any claims against that because I just don't know. I haven't done any research on it. Um, yeah, so I think everyone's kind of agreeing here. And Shannon says she likes my haircut. Thank you, Shannon. My haircut was well overdue. I had my hair was just out of control. It was a little nuts. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think everyone agrees like returns, just don't fight them. It's not worth the mental energy. It's not worth, it's just a cost of doing business. I mean, that's just really, let's summarize it there. All right, do you have any other questions, guys, before I wrap up? I'm pretty, I'm pretty jacked up right now, guys. I'm super excited. I got to call this place in the morning. The, wherever it is here in Charlotte, I got to call in the morning and schedule a delivery time. I hope if I can get it here tomorrow afternoon, that'd give me the whole weekend just to go crazy on it. Um, I'm hoping honestly to get like, I want to get through probably a third of it and just get it sorted and try to experiment with quantity listings this weekend. That's kind of my goal. I actually ordered a brand new lighting kit just to put in my garage so I don't have to haul the jeans up and down the stairs or the pants. So everything's going to stay in the garage. I'm going to create a prepping station in my garage and literally as bin after bin is prepped, it's just going to go straight to the new storage unit I had. That way I can handle it as like little as possible. I'm actually toying with trying to get some people in here to help me process it. Um, just because I want to, my goal is to have it by the end of May have all of it listed, which is super aggressive, but I really think that I can do it. Um, I think it'll just skyrocket me towards my goal this year. Um, so someone has a lot of people to sleep tonight. Um, I'm, I'm been a little giddy lately. It's been hard for me to fall asleep. I've been trying to answer a lot of comments at night as I'm falling asleep. Um, but it's been a long week. It's, I've been a lot of extra hours at work. That's why I haven't done a video in two days. So I'll probably sleep pretty well tonight. Um, let's see. Anthony just asked, have you ever got, he said, have you ever gotten screwed over by a buyer? Uh, yeah, quite a few times I've had buyers just stay, say things aren't as described or, you know, just stuff just to easily on to pay return. Uh, shipping and it's just this part of the way it goes. You just kind of accept and move on. Casey has a question. Did you use my link for lights? <laughs> Casey, you know what? No, I didn't. I ordered it from my Amazon app while I was on my break at lunch. I did not have time to find someone's link. I should have though. That's a good idea. I'll make sure I support you next time. Sorry about that. What if I told you I use prop sales link? Would you, would you be offended? <laughs> um, all right. I don't think... Oh, so Dwight just asked, this is the last question I'm gonna take, guys, I'm gonna wrap up. He said, when should you get a storage unit? So that's a really cool question because I think it there is, it depends for sure, but I think there are some things to look for, some indicators. First, if you do not work well in a cluttered environment, and so say your productivity goes like this, which is kind of like mine, if things are a mess and crap is everywhere, I just shut down until things are cleaned up. I say get it sooner than later. Around where I am, storage units are cheap. I'm paying under, it's like 298 right now. I'm paying for two 10 by 20 storage units. So what's that, like 75 cents a square foot, if I did my math right, I think it's, it's something really cheap. So for me, it's a no brainer. I have access 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. to get my stuff out of it. It's 10 minutes from where I live. Um, I can hit it during my lunch break. Now, if storage is more expensive, then it might be an issue of really waiting and balancing and getting inventory to the right size. But I got to about a thousand items and I just was like, okay, like this is silly. Actually, it was like closer to 800. Um, it was like 800. I moved to Charlotte. I moved into a one bedroom apartment from a three bedroom house. And it just was like, there's no way I'm keeping this many bins in an apartment. Like I need a storage unit. And so it's just kind of stuck ever since. Not having the clutter is just so freeing for me and allows me to really kind of keep building. And I'm actually so much more organized because I have shelves and bins and everything's labeled. And it's just, it just works out better. Oh, that's a good question. I'm gonna answer that too. So Philip said, are you putting Goodwill sourcing on hold? The answer is no. A um, couple reasons. First, I like sh I like thrifting. So I, I don't know that I wanna thrift as hard as I've been thrifting forever. That's why I'm looking at bulk buying, but I'm always gonna be thrifting because to go into a thrift store and find five pairs of silver jeans and a couple you know, other 40, 50, $60 items, it's just, it's fun. It's a high ROI. I, I think it's, I don't know, I just enjoy it and I'm not gonna stop doing something I enjoy. Two, I want to keep bringing haul videos to you guys because I think they're valuable to see what I'm picking up, what's still selling. And I don't want to lose my focus on what brands are selling. And thrifting is the best way for me to stay in touch with the market and how things are going. If I get too niche into bulk buying and get away from that, I feel like I'm going to lose a lot of my head knowledge and brand knowledge that I've worked really hard to accumulate. And I want to stay up on that. Um, and then really kind of the third reason for me is that I want to stay diversified. So, um, doing that a couple days a week keeps me diversified and i want us to keep getting suits and blazers like i just sold a hundred dollar suit tonight it was an ermine gildo zegna getting those big sales like that it's just it's so it's awesome momentum for your business and then you're in them for 10 you're selling for 10. i don't want to stop sourcing those type of items so 
yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at with that. Uh, all right, guys. I know there's a lot more questions, but I am I'm gonna have to get going. I still got to wrap up a couple of things before bed. I gotta ship my items. Hopefully, this was helpful to you guys. Hopefully, you learned a little bit of olive bean. Hopefully, you learned how to research brands, and hopefully, you learned how excited I am about my bulk shipment. Uh, appreciate you guys following along. Appreciate all the love, the questions. Check me out on Instagram, uh, Endless Entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm gonna be documenting a lot of my palettes through that. I'm gonna do a lot of live video through there and just little clips here and there. And I will document on YouTube, I promise. I'll bring you all the footage. I think Prof Sales is gonna come over. He's you know, just not too far from me and uh, videotape some of it when it gets here. So I will keep you guys updated. Have an awesome night. Thank you, Casey, for shouting out and bringing everyone over here. Um, and I uh, hope everyone has a good night. Take care, guys.